Satsang 56 The Nine Faceted Devotion Nava Vida Bhakti Twentieth September nineteen thirty five Evening Satsang The first type of devotion is listening or shravana. Devotion or bhakti is the mother of knowledge, yana. Without devotion, there is no knowledge. Devotion is the highest path. If you cannot be devoted in actions, then do so mentally. Listen to how to worship. Listen to all of the paths explained by the Guru. That is the path of knowledge, yana, the path of desirelessness, vairagya, the path of spiritual practice, sadhana, and the path of final truth, siddhanta. Find out the essence of them all. The second type of devotion is singing God's praises, or kirtana bhakti, or kirtana bhajana. Kirtan is singing in praise of God who is embodied. Do the kirtan that you have learned by heart, Recognize the many important references and understand the meaning of them all. The story of God as Lord Hari should be told in Kirtan, not for any other purpose than it brings a feeling of happiness to do so. The entire world is your field for propagating the greatness of the self, Atman. The kirtan of devotion purifies all. The third type of devotion is remembrance of God. Remember the Sadguru. This must be done all the time morning, noon, and evening. Remember, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Shivoham, I am Shiva. The remembering must be as constant as the clock that ticks. The heart in which devotion to God is constant is a moving, living temple. All can become liberated by the name of Rama. Lord Shiva himself escaped from the sense objects through repetition of the sacred name of Rama. The fourth type of devotion is service to the Guru. The Guru's feet should be worshipped. Serve the Guru in order to be released from birth and death. It is the Sadguru who shows reality. That which is not seen by the eyes and which is not apparent is achieved because of the blessing of the Guru. Such states of consciousness as non-attachment, surrender, being beyond the body, being beyond the mind, and being in a natural state of complete indifference are all attained only by the blessing of the Guru. The names are different, but the state is one. If one of these states is attained, all are attained. Non-attachment is to give up the sense of mine, 
as well as name and form. There is nobody else capable of forgiving except the Guru, who is motherly. If you totally depend on the Guru, you will attain God. The devotee must serve at the feet of the Guru. Verification of what we learn must be threefold. The confirmation through the teaching of the Guru, confirmation through the teaching of the scriptures, and verification through one's own experience. The attainment of the knowledge of Brahman is dependent upon oneself. But without the Sadguru, you will not get real contentment. By study only, you will not get that which is learned through the words of the Guru. That which is unattainable becomes possible to attain only by the grace of the Guru. The attainment of absolute reality, para Brahman, is not possible without the company of the saints and sages. This is the sign of the fourth type of devotion. The fifth type of devotion is worship, archan. The various gods are really gurus who have existed in the past. All of the temples are of these gods. How can we build a temple to him who is greater than the world? The man of knowledge, the yoni, the wise man, is God. The body of the wise man, the form that he bears as his body, is itself an image of knowledge an idol of wisdom. He is divine wisdom incarnate. That is the knowledge possessed by the Sadguru. Yet the Sadguru is different from these. So long as you have not met the Sadguru, you can only worship the past Gurus, the ancient men of wisdom. However, when one does meet him, devotion to the Sadguru must be done with one's physical body, speech, and mind. Devotion to the Sadguru is the highest action we can do unto ourself. This is the best action that we can do for our own welfare the action that makes all achievement and contentment possible. All other actions only become useless and perish. The sixth type of devotion is to bow down, vandanam. One should bow down to God and to the Sadguru. By bowing down, Blemishes in our character go away, and blessings are given, and the Guru is pleased. By bowing, you gain humility and happiness. And by this happiness, you achieve a state where there is no animosity, only bliss. The seventh type of devotion is the path of service, dasyam. One must always be available at the door of God or the Guru. One must rebuild dilapidated temples, reconstruct water tanks, purify the mind, and always increase the glory of God. The meaning of being always at the door of the Guru or God is to be always concentrating on the self, 
Atman within. The awareness that I am. The attention to the I am as beingness presence, the sense of our existence, is the door of the Guru, the door of God. The inner side is the place of the Guru, the place of God. Our awareness, our attention, is the path of entering into the temple of God. We have to enter the inner recesses by this temple door. By constant self-awareness, you can go to the state where the Guru exists. When we say we build old, dilapidated temples, we really mean the bodies of all people. We have to try by various means to make healthy and strong the bodies of devotees that are harassed and troubled by various calamities and difficulties, for which we must give verbal advice and offer practical support. The water tanks of mind are broken by adverse happenings and repeated shocks, as there is a lot of dirt accumulated in them because of wrong thinking, as well as a lot of weeds and moss in these tanks. We must remove all of this dirt and clean the water tank. The walls around this mind tank must be strong and built to last, and we must so arrange it that the water of this tank will be always useful to others. We must like what the Sadguru likes. The Sadguru likes that we keep away from sense objects, that we must be content without enjoyment through the sense organs, and that we must remain constantly in the immortal and blissful state of the self. We must give up anxiety about family life and recite stories about the greatness of God, as well as sing his praises in kirtan or as bhajans. We must not have any dislike for lesser, more menial types of work. And we must even be content to work as a slave for God. We must do little jobs with enjoyment and enthusiasm so that we lose the pride of our body. And we must perform service with inner contentment. If we cannot physically do these things, we should at least mentally reflect along these lines. The eighth type of devotion is friendship with God, Sakyam. We must be friendly with God. The self, Atman, is the Sadguru. We must bind ourselves to the Sadguru by our deep love. As there is service in this worldly life, so in spiritual life there is the ninefold devotion. We must try to do new things all the time. While offering devotion, we must do some novel things used creatively. This gives our mind happiness and new energy and joy. We must act in such a way that the Sadguru will be happy and behave in a fashion loved by God. Only then is there friendship and affection. We must praise the Sadguru 
We may even have to be aloof from all in order to be friendly with God. One who acts with such a feeling that God is his real life force is capable of becoming a true devotee. For the Sadhguru is the life force. He is the Supreme Self, which is called the devotion of friendship. In Hindu mythology, there was a house built out of lacquer and other flammable things called Laksha Griha. The meaning of Laksha is spiritually somewhat different. God in the form of Lord Krishna could bring out a Pandava family from the Laksha Griha through a tunnel. Laksha Griha can be said to be our attention to objects. We are tied to objects and we will free ourselves only by focusing our attention on and remembering the Lord. Laksha means object of attention, remembering that I am that I. Remembering that we are is called Laksha. We start from the state of not knowing anything, and by listening and paying attention to our mother and father, and also listening to many things which are told by many other people, we are filled up with ideas that we have heard, and our attention is conditioned through listening to such things. The Karavas means individuals, the jivas, who have turned their back on the self. By their conceptual imagination, the object of attention is jailed in the house of ego. Desires are going to burn these individuals by kindling the fuel of objects. By putting our whole attention to remembering the Sadhguru and by remembering the name of God, we free ourselves from this flammable house of objects, which brings only the flames of sorrow. Those who free themselves from this enjoy total happiness. Others, by failing to choose the right way, remain in the same flammable house and suffer from burns again and again. This life is the opportunity for you to free yourself. If you worry about yourself, what necessity has the Guru to worry about you? Give up your worry and take care of the Guru. And the Sadguru will surely take care of you. The Sadguru is the Supreme Self, Param Atman. He is without any form or blemish. Our faith is so often lost as soon as something happens which is not desirable to us, but we must never worry. Let God do what he likes. You say that you are not superior to God, but your mind does not feel like that. You must behave in accordance with God's will and never be sorry. If a man puts his trust in the Sadguru, it is the Sadguru whose heart suffers even if the man is but slightly hurt, or if by even a hair on his head is touched. The Sadguru is always taking the side of the destitute. 
You will never rest before giving you the highest place, which is not fallible. Those whom you think to be yours will accompany you to the cemetery. They will lament loudly upon your death, but God will never let down those who have surrendered themselves to him. Therefore, you must have friendship with God. The ninth type of devotion is self-surrender. If you feel that all is Brahman, then you must have the conviction that you are also Brahman. The state of non-duality comes naturally. When you get the mantra from the Guru, you are a royal king. Out of five, only one succeeds. Goddess Lakshmi came to put a mark on the forehead of five men, but four of them said that they had not washed their faces. They then rushed off to wash their faces. The fifth man, however, stood where he was. Lakshmi put the mark on his forehead and he became rich. The very inaction of the faithful devotee became the act of Brahma. This is what is called the state of purity. Spiritual practice must be intense by leaving off all wrong thinking and our devotion must be all-consuming. To hold dear to our heart the image of our Sadguru at all times is the practice, and that is the state of purity. That which is always clean, always sacred, and always pure is the most powerful, indestructible, and deathless true nature, Swarupa of the Sadguru. Not to forget this is itself spiritual practice, true sadhana. <laughs>